You're listening to the Inquisitive Red Podcast, the show that brings you philosophical ponderings of your life from a bird's eye view. Now, here's your host, Shah. Welcome back to the Inquisitive Wren podcast. I'm Shah, your host. This is a podcast about connecting with many different people from many different walks of life. And I'm particularly interested in people who have found that they can get over or fly above things. Uh, and especially uh, people who work within mental health or within any type of healing area. And so having said that, today... Uh, we are launching the segment about spirituality. Uh, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that I've been focused on the artist in residence. So I've had a few people. I still have more uh, lined up. We're just working out dates. So there will be a continuation. These segments aren't finished. I just go on to different segments. So have a look at the playlists, uh, especially if you're watching on YouTube. I will have playlists for artists in residence and then the spirituality playlist. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Liz Winter. Liz is a professional counselor, certified life coach, author. She's written three books, which we'll talk about, and she's also a medium. And so I really wanted to speak to Liz today about her work in all these areas, especially mediumship. And we talk a lot about that. So I'm really excited to bring you this interview today. And Liz has worked, she's based in Brisbane in Australia. She's worked, you know, with people throughout the world. She does Zoom interviews, Zoom uh, consultations, and she also holds workshops as well. She's got a few coming up, so make sure you have a look. All her links will be in the show notes. So without further ado, let's welcome Liz to the show. Welcome, Liz. So nice to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I'm going to jump right in. I know you address this on your website, um, but for our listeners who may not be familiar with your website yet or even this podcast, can you give us a little bit of a timeline in how you work? In other words, did the counseling come first? Did the psychicness come first? Did the astrology come next? How, <laughs> how did that work for you? Well, I guess the psychic side of things unfolded for me when I was quite young. Um, and then I went on to explore more and became interested in all the other things that I do. Um, I had a few strong psychic experiences as a child, uh, but I think a lot of people do. I think we're all psychic. Perhaps people don't talk about it, but I'm sure a lot of people have experiences when they're young. Uh, but it was more a synchronicity of events, perhaps fateful, that led me to the path that I, I am now on. And I actually wrote a whole book about that. My very first book I wrote was called For the Love of Spirit in 2013. I published that because so many people would ask me, how did this happen? And so I thought, one day I'm just going to write it all down. So, yeah, it felt very guided. I felt very guided towards my chosen path. Wonderful. So, but have you ever been drawn into any other direction? You know, some people start out studying something and then 10 years later they change up. Have you ever been drawn? Well, I never really knew what I wanted to do in high school when they handed me a piece of paper with all the options and careers that none of those rang true for me. Maybe nursing a little bit but that didn't eventuate. Uh, much later in life, I did become an aged care nurse and worked in that field for a few years and found that incredibly rewarding, um, but it was very hard work. Uh, but, you know, I was able to sit with people while they passed over and so it was a real rich uh, learning experience for me. Wow. Uh, but my path always seems to come back to... Sharing with people is my passion of how we're not alone and how there are so many loved ones in spirit and angels and guides that want to support us in our journey here on earth. And that is my real mission, I feel, is to take the fear out of that and to let people know it's actually very natural. 
Oh, wonderful, because it can be <laughs> quite, it can get quite convoluted. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But let's talk about counseling just for a second. Um, are you trained in a particular school of thought or, you know, this person centered, there's young and there's all sorts of counseling. Do you? Well, here in Australia, I did a diploma of counseling, which is um, a few years work, which covered a bit of everything, yeah. you know, yeah. a bit of all the different counseling styles. Yeah. But uh, and I also did life coaching. So between the two of those gave me a lot of added skills for when I was dealing with people who come to me who are experiencing grief, which is very common. And often people seek out a medium, obviously, when they've lost somebody. So, you know, in that sense, I found it really helpful. It's so grounding, I find, counselling, and it's a lovely um, partner to the spiritual work because spiritual work can be very um, up there, you know, out there, up there, and then that grounding energy of the counselling it is a really lovely balance, I think. Excellent. So just so we're clear, because this is something I like to talk about as well, are you saying that you sort of do them separately? Like, you know, when somebody comes to a medium, do they want a medium or counsellor or both? I believe both. So many people aren't heard. Uh, so many people feel that no one really listens to them, I feel. Right. So counselling is a lot about feeling heard and when we touch on sensitive subjects such as someone who has passed or that they loved or, you know, often a lot of emotion comes up and they, and they share that with me. So I like to go with the flow in my sessions because sometimes people need more evidential information because they're wondering if it's all real. So it's more medium focused. Then some people need more listening or, and some people need a bit of both. So. Ah, so that's really helpful because I struggled with that. I always thought, you know, when I'm doing mediumship, that's what somebody's come for. But yes, I, I know bits come in, but I think about myself when I want a psychic reading or mediumship reading, I want someone to connect with spirit. I don't want a counselor. I, if I mm. want a counselor, yes, I'll go exactly. to one. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but but I want that because spirit connection and so the mm. way you've explained it is really helpful because I think as you said you can have both now I think the key here though with you is that you're actually skilled in both <laughs> you know some people aren't but you are skilled in both so you could be trusted with both and I think that's really helpful to know um, I'm just going exactly. by my own experience that sometimes I've gone to a psychic and they start counseling I'm saying wait hold on I know where's <laughs> yeah. spirit where's spirit I want spirit here I want can you connect with spirit on this please <laughs> exactly yeah I, I totally get that too and most people will let you know you know yes. will let you know yes. you know I try to let them take the lead a bit to what the, they're needing and what they're wanting that's mm. brilliant um yes now speaking of your books as well you've been a busy bee so you've, <laughs> you've written four books. We'll talk about your latest one in a minute. But I wondered what your thoughts are on creativity because writers are creative in every sense. You may be, even though you're writing about your life's experience, the way you form the sentences, the words, the descriptions is creativity. So do you think creativity, you're born with it or can it be learned? Um. Interesting question. I guess I believe we're all creative, but I think there's too many limitations in our world of what the definition of, of creativity is <laughs> because I've always found I'm more mentally creative. I can't paint. I can't, you know, do anything with my hands creatively or play an instrument or, or sing or... but. You know, mentally, you know, you can be very creative with troubleshooting or problem solving or, um, you know, writing. Um, and to me, my the uh, desire to write really came from 
wanting to share information uh, more than I, I see myself as a sharer of information more than a writer, really. And the way I write is really how I talk, you know, how, if I was talking to somebody. Right. So, um, yeah. Still, you have to be creative to work out how you're going to present it and the sequence of the chapters and, and, and that type of thing. Definitely. Sorry. But I think we're all creative. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I agree with that. And I agree with you about the psychicness. I believe we're all psychic as well. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. I So we're going to go into mediumship now, but that... I suppose that brings me to the mediumship. My view is that, and I think your dog agrees. <laughs> <laughs> um, I whilst I believe we're all psychic, uh, the theory, the 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 jury's out for me on the mediumship part. I'm not convinced that everyone can connect like a medium does to spirit to the point where they can relay the messages the way a medium does I could be wrong these are my thoughts but what what are your thoughts another medium's thoughts well I think there we're all born with the ability to communicate back home is how I like to see spirit world is our real home yeah but it's not everybody's destiny or everybody's mission or or life purpose to become a professional medium or to study the the craft um so i think you're right like not everybody can relay the messages in the way a a a trained medium can but it doesn't mean that every single one of us can't have a relationship with our loved ones who've passed yeah and our spirit guides and our guardian angels absolutely yes and that that is a difference so and I was speaking to somebody the other day uh on a podcast uh and she was saying that yes she connects with her father uh but she can't she's unable to actually communicate what that connection is so I think that's a perfect example of that and maybe that's how we all some of us still do sometimes it's not always easy to get the information sometimes it just flows and sometimes spirit for whatever reason uh and it could be us maybe I don't know but some my experience has been sometimes that particular spirit aren't isn't that forthcoming but there's so many views on mediumship and I think I'm a born skeptic which I know is odd because I'm a medium but <laughs> and I, I you know I trust the information I'll you know I, this is how much I trust it I will go into a spiritualist church stand on a platform to to you know 70 people and just trust but then I sometimes I go off and go mm, what was that all about <laughs> but you know what are your thoughts about skeptics and the issue of questioning so much the information well I think it's perfectly natural and to to question yes and so you should really till proven otherwise Mm. and that is where the the beauty of mediumship compared to psychic uh, purely psychic information has an advantage because you can bring through evidential information that you know, I couldn't possibly know. And if I'm reading, I'm sure you've had this experience too when you've done readings, is when you can give somebody some piece of information and it may be very trivial like, you know, yesterday, you know, spirits showing me you went to the movie theatre or something. It might be something silly like that, but it's like, well, how could you possibly know I went to the movie theatre yesterday? It's like all spirit was with you. And I've seen people's faces just change when evidential information is delivered. Like their whole face is like in shock and you can see bells going off everywhere. So this is real. This is actually real. 
So that is uh, wonderful when that when that happens. It's something the medium can't make happen, <laughs> but when it happens, <laughs> it happens. Acts. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And and I find that this is where science has a lot of catching up to do, because it is evidential. How would you know that out of all the things, a movie theater, you could have picked a million and one things. How would you have known that? So exactly. Yes. And there comes a time when you we have to, I think, start to I, I know that there have been research studies, but I don't know if the funding's not there or people are just not interested, but science, I believe, has a lot of catching up to, to do in that because it is real. We're not making it up. Um, there's no, I don't believe there's a cold, there's no uh, such thing as a cold, re- I spoke about this before on the podcast, the whole cold reading thing. I don't know where that's come from. How I was joking saying, do you have to be cold? Is that the whole issue? <laughs> I don't know. Where, where does this cold reading thing come? How can you cold read? <laughs> does it make sense? Oh, it does. Then. It doesn't, doesn't it all. any sense at all. And people have, and listeners, you know this, if you've had a psychic read, if you've had a mediumship reading, especially, you have no qualms about saying, no, I don't get it. Or no, I don't understand. You do tell us when you don't get it. So, yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And then we go back to spirit and get clarification or we work with spirit. It's not just us. We're literally the medium, the go between. Yeah. It's a co-creation for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. But tell us about your latest book, The Keeping Alive, The Keeping Love Alive. That's very important. Keeping Love Alive on the Other Side. Keeping Love Alive on the Other Side. Um, yeah, five elements to forever love. Yes. And um, I basically was inspired to write that book based on clients having their own experiences with spirit and their loved ones but not really believing them and thinking it didn't mean anything and also just the amount of grief seeing people experiencing so much grief and knowing that their loved ones are just standing next to them so it was really a book to encourage people to value and acknowledge that relationship and that it can continue obviously differently when someone has passed over so sort of taking that angle because and there's so much fear uh, around mediumship for so many people yeah. so it was trying to take the fear out of it and, and focus more on the love and the comfort and the connection that people can have yeah why is that why do you think people fear uh, this connection to the other side well, a lot of reasons. I think um, the media has not been helpful. Um, you know, you go back to movies like Poltergeist. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, things like that. So the media has always made it a bit spooky. You know, spooky sells, spooky makes money, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, those Ghostbuster shows and, and all of that. So you've got that whole media influence. Of course, you've got the religious um, influence that it's, you know, it's taboo, um, you know, and you hear stories of, you know, awful things happening to people, poltergeist, uh, that's another movie. Yes. Um, so I think it's, like, and it's just fear of the unknown, really. If you don't understand something, it, it, it brings fear so I think there's a lot of reasons and uh, depends on people's upbringing all sorts of things what ideas they've picked up on the way from friends or family or yeah but once somebody close to you passes away a lot of people who previously would never look at anything like mediumship actually very often become at least a little bit more open to finding out more because they start searching for answers. Yes. Yeah. And I suppose that's a part of the grief as well. One of the things I've been challenged with in the past about the mediumship is, um, do you think that uh, people are just grieving and that's why they're believing the mediumship? They're just seeking, uh, 
the other side. This was when I was doing my master's in psychology. One of the um, professors, we because a student asked, somebody asked, you know, do, we we're talking about ethics. And a student said, if I connect to the other side during my exams, is that ethical? I, I almost <laughs> fell out my chair. It was brilliant. Um, and they said, no, it's not ethical. But then they said that they didn't believe. The professor said they didn't believe in mediumship reading, which is fine, you know. Um, but that's the thing. They're saying, well, people are just grieving and they'll believe anything. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I that again, the evidence shows otherwise. Well, exactly. And not only evidence, as we were talking about before with the movie theatre, it can be the person coming through in spirit could bring through information about themselves, you know, where they lived or, or what occupation they had or how they died or you know, things they did in their lifetime. Um, so, you know, it really can be uncanny. And obviously when someone's grieving, they're vulnerable. And, and um, that's why I think mediums do need, I think it could should be maybe highly encouraged or compulsory that if you're going to be a professional medium, you need to do some sort of basic counselling skills. Yeah, yeah. Um, because unfortunately, in my industry, there is no quality control, you know. None whatsoever. So, and it yeah. does give people, it does give the craft a bad name sometimes when people don't have those skills, unfortunately, which mm -hmm. leads to things. I mean, my children, I have two adult children who are totally cynical, <laughs> which is so funny. <laughs> and they say, oh, mum, it's just all science and, you know, it's just mum's thing. She's often her own thing, you know. But... You know, I totally accept people's, it's not everybody's cup of tea, you know. Exactly, it isn't. And it's one of those things. Uh, again, I, I yeah, it's just one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we could go on. Do you tend to get s little symptoms? I tend to get physical things like my nose itches a lot and things when I, not all the time, but do you experience physical symptoms? Uh, sometimes I do. Uh, I know some mediums are very much like that. Uh, sometimes if, for example, someone passed with um, a chest condition, I'll start coughing in the reading or I'll, I'll just feel all this congestion. Yeah. And then once I bring that information through, the congestion will disappear. So sometimes I'll take on that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. For our listeners, why is it that uh, some mediums can feel, so clairsentience, they can feel those symptoms, that physicalness, uh, and then others may be more clairvoyant where they see everything, and then some will be more clairaudient where they actually hear spirit. Why, do you, why does that happen? Well, I'm not 100% sure. I was always initially in my early career uh, clear audience. I could hear them really good. Mm -hmm. uh, they would download their thoughts and press them onto my mind, which they still do. But um, so it's not like hearing on the outside, but it's like hearing on the inside. But then over the years, as I continued, my clairvoyance got stronger and stronger. So I think it can change, you know, but maybe we, I mean, who knows for sure. Sometimes I like to think perhaps we had another lifetime where we developed that sense and we brought that in with us. And But I think they, they, that's one of the questions we'll find the answer to when we actually get home to spirit. <laughs> yes, I agree. For sure. There's so many things we don't know for sure yeah. that we'll find out eventually. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I have no idea. People ask it all the time. And every reading will be different. Um, I, I'm sure you've had this. Sometimes you get names throughout a reading. And sometimes with some people, I don't get a name at all. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, me too. It's like sometimes it's just like that bang, 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 bang. Mm -hmm. And then other times. And I think that is a complex vibrational thing going on there when all the stars align when all the vibrations align between you the person you're reading for and the people in spirit then it's just like you know just smooth but then sometimes the person you're reading for is feeling very uh guarded because they're you know which is understandable 
you know, um, perhaps a medium's having a bad day. I mm. mean, where they're only human, you know. Mm. <laughs> or only human. Yeah. And then maybe, for example, there's a complex situation with the relationship of the person coming through in spirit um, with the person you're reading for and there's un been unsaid things or there's guilt involved or regret and sometimes it gets a bit trickier there too. So, and also I found, I don't know if you found this, if they, if the person in spirit was a very good communicator when they were alive, they come through, they're so much easier to get the information. Whereas if you get someone who's a very shy sort of person, um, you really have to draw it out of them in spirit, you know. <laughs> so that's interesting. I've always found that quite interesting, that the personality type tends to stay the same or come through at least, present that way at least, yeah. Yeah, and again, how would we know? How We don't know them. We don't know the person. We have no idea, <laughs> no clue who this is. So, mm. yes, exactly. And then people will say, oh, my God, that's exactly how she was or how he is. And um, I, I did one reading, and the guy that came through was like his thing was dirty jokes. <laughs> now, <laughs> I, of, of all things, you know, how could that be? And I said to the lady, well, um, I want to tell you something. She said, I already know. And I said, he's telling a dirty joke. And she said, oh, my God, that's him. So, <laughs> you know, of all the things. Yeah. So brilliant stuff. Liz. Have you ever had to fly above anything? I always ask my guests this question in honor of the inquisitive wren. The wren is my favorite little bird. So anything you think in life you've had to fly above? Well, many situations I've had to fly above or chosen to fly above, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like forgiveness, forgiving people or... Uh, all sorts of things. But the first thing that comes to mind when you say that is uh, when I was about 16, I was walking down the street to the laundromat. Actually, I'd only just moved out of home. I was in a share house and learning how to do my own washing and all of that sort of thing. I was walking down the street and randomly I found myself out of my body watching my body with my laundry walk down the street. <laughs> And it only lasted about five or ten seconds. I was flying over my body and I could see everything. And then before I knew it, I was back in my body. And that very short experience was a life changer for me. I just felt completely different after that and knew that there was much more to life than I knew about. Wow. So, yeah, I did go for a fly. <laughs> You went for a literal fly. You literally flew literal above. Fly. That <laughs> yeah. is the best answer yet. <laughs> Fantastic. So that is a real out-of-body experience. Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. Now, have there been any experiences where you have been surprised by the information? Even you as a medium, after all these years, went, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I think there's been many, to be honest. Um, well, actually, I have run over the years many uh, medium development circles. Yes. And some of the surprises have actually come from my students. And there was one experience back in 2007 um, or 2006, something like that, and I, I had noticed for a while my throat felt a bit strange, but... I was a busy mom, mother at the time. My kids were little and, you know, as you do, you were juggling a million things and I just ignored it. Anyway, um, one of my students in class at, uh, this week, um, she said, oh, I'm getting a message in, from spirit that you need to get your throat checked. And my stomach dropped because I went, oh, I, knew, I know something's not quite right. So I went to the doctor, cut a long story short. I did have a very small cancer thing there that I, and I had to get half my th thyroid removed so that was surprising I didn't see that coming but I was very grateful you know wow. um, that, that that was such a direct message and it was you know caught before it ever became a huge problem so that is incredible wow 
And that's unusual too because I don't usually get health information. Mm -hmm. Um, Perhaps, you know, I would rather not go there, to be honest, because I think that can be irresponsible. Mm -hmm. But in this, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule and in this specific incident, spirit was looking out for me. So, yes. Definitely. That I love that story. Amazing. And it sounds like your student is going to be tapping into the health <laughs> part, the health. Because there are some health mediums or medical mediums. They call medical themselves. intuitives. Medical yeah. intuitives, yes. Mm. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, email us at inquire at theinquisitiverin.com. That's E-N-Q-U-I-R-E at theinquisitiverin.com. Be sure to check all social media, especially the Facebook page, for new topics being discussed. And if you can contribute, please let us know so you can be a guest on the show. Now, back to the show. But I, you know, just going off the back of that, I think some listeners would know as well and perhaps agree that sometimes that was a good situation. That was a good outcome in the end. But sometimes you won't be told what's going on. Sometimes, like people have said, why didn't any medium say that a pandemic was coming? I've seen Mm. that on social media. And who knows, maybe a medium did tell somebody that, oh, there's going to be something going on in a couple of years or whatever. But sometimes we're not told everything. And maybe that's for a reason. I don't think we're meant to know everything. Exactly. You know, once I saw a client down the street and he was on crutches. He said, why didn't you tell me I was going to break my leg? <laughs> and I said, well, if you had known that, you may have broken two legs because you would have been so nervous walking around. So there are certain things we're just not meant to know for our own benefit, I think, for our own protection, really. Yes. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. (laughs) Because the love stuff, which is, I think it goes in spurts at certain bits in my practice. I get lots of questions about love and then other things. But people often say, can you describe him? Can you describe her? Can you? And sometimes. What's their name? How will I meet them? (laughs) How old are they? What are they wearing? (laughs) What are they wearing? Yes. What are they wearing? Every, how tall are they? Where do they live? Uh, like spirit, you know, if, if spirit gave you all of that, you're going to push away every single person that comes forward who doesn't look anything like that, probably. So I give exactly. you what I get and that's mm, it. <laughs> give what you get. That's right. I mean, I have had the odd occasion, very rarely, that I have picked up on someone and it has come true, but, yeah. it, you know, it's a random thing. It's not something that um, you can guarantee, I don't exactly. think. Because exactly. medium, the difference between psychic reading and mediumship reading, mediumship readings are not particularly predictive. They're more about evidential and guidance perhaps, um, whereas psychic readings are more uh, vibrational in nature, picking up vibrations and more predictive in nature yes Um, that was one of my next questions absolutely (laughs) yeah what's the difference between the psychic and mediumship readings absolutely so when you know if the listeners are are wondering you know what sort of reading they should get I think you need to ask yourself what what are you wanting are you wanting proof of the other side are you wanting to connect with someone who's past that you love um even though there's no guarantee that they'll come through but they might um or are you wanting more you know a tarot reading or or a psychic reading to give you a bit more clearer uh guidance about the future or perhaps the soulmate or um that sort of thing yes and for our listeners as well, do you do tarot as well as uh, oracle cards and all of that, as well as mediumship? Um, I play with angel cards a lot. I love, <laughs> I love, I love happy bright cards. I don't really like the um, the traditional tarot that right, much. Right, right. I find it a bit 
I don't know, there's a bit murky in spots, but that's my preference. But I don't actually use them in my readings or anything, although I do use them in my classes to just give out little angel messages and things like that for everybody. But um, I love playing with them. Yes, and you've used them on your podcast as well to do yes. sort of some yeah, of the yeah. meditations, which have been lovely as well, because that's how I found you, your your podcast, um, which, by the way, we're going to talk about because the the name is genius, All Aboard Mediumship. I mean, that is a direct download from spirit, I think. <laughs> I know I, it really was like that because I just couldn't get the name. I couldn't get the name. And then one day I was just sitting outside and it just popped right in and I went, <laughs> oh, thank you. And then someone I shared it with suggested I make the S in a, a capital S medium ship yes. to make it clear. And um, that's how it was born. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely brilliant name. Tell us about the oh, podcast. Well, it's just a short podcast, usually around 20 minutes, and I have a little format I like to do. I always start, I have a theme for each uh, fortnightly show that I produce. Uh, The theme could be anything from connecting with uh, your guide to angels or last week I did one on abundance and financial abundance because I see working with spirit not just about connecting with people on the other side, but using their energy to help us learn and grow in all areas of life, you know. So I have a theme each week and then I always choose a card for everybody, one card for everyone. We look at that, talk a bit about the theme, and then um, one of my favourite parts of it is I, every week I do a guided meditation related to the theme, Um and I love putting music in the background. That's one of my favourite things, putting music in the background to the meditation. Yeah, and when it gets deuced and comes out, I actually sit there and do the meditation myself. <laughs> it's quite weird really listening to myself. But um, because I, I go on a journey, I like to take people on a journey and that's in my meditations. Yes. So listeners, all the links will be in the show notes, uh, but I would suggest the meditations are lovely. So Go and have a listen, because especially if you're um, looking for, I I think it raises your vibration. That's what I found. So if you're looking for a bit of a pickup, you know, it's something you could do, as Liz said, the 20 minutes or so, you could do one in the morning as you start out your day. So they are lovely to listen to. Um, And you know, when we think about life and moving forward and past lives, you mentioned, is there any decade that you past or present or, or future that you'd like to live in? Well, in this life, I love the 70s, <laughs> but that might be because I'm 60 years old now. Um, that was my teenage years. Uh, so I had a great time in the 70s. Um, but I don't know. I think I'm drawn to lots of different eras. Probably my most favourite one, I would have to say, is Native American Indian. Um, I would love to go back and live in a peaceful time of Native American Indians. I love the way they lived and their belief systems and, you know, just everything about them. I just think they're great. Oh, lovely. And back to the earth. Everything was from the earth with them, wasn't it? Yes, everything. And honouring everything and talking to great spirit and, I don't know, it just appeals to me. I'm sure I've had a life as an American Indian. I was going to say, probably. And do you give a lot of past life readings? Does that come into it sometimes? It does come into it sometimes, but I've always found, and maybe you've found this too, that spirit will only bring in a message to someone about a past life if it's relevant to something they're going through in their life at the time uh, where they feel it would be helpful for them to gain a deeper understanding yeah absolutely and just on that you know well there's a lot of controversy about past lives of course (laughs) um but if someone's skeptical because they they pretty much are I would say to people, just try it and see and keep your skepticism, of course, but 
just try it and see because you could learn something from the experience. Mm, I agree. I really agree with that. Yeah. And um, now I know you're an animal lover and you've got, I've heard a dog back there. Any other <laughs> pets? Uh, I have a, a rescue cat who's um, Loki and he, he's a little bit of a scaredy cat, but he's beautiful. But um, I guess uh, my Cavoodle, which is part, you know, King Charles Cavalier and part um, Poodle, she wow. is like my um, child. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess I like dogs and cats. I'm not really, you know, one or the other. I like them both. And are they psychic? Oh, uh, I think so. I think they are. Yeah. I think Definitely. most animals are. Yeah. yeah animals, young children. Mm. Definitely. Just that innocence. They're untainted. You know, they're a blank slate there. They just feel everything. Absolutely. And, you know, if you're upset, you know, a dog will come and cuddle you and lick you and, or, you know, they, they feel everything. They pick up everything. They do indeed. Yes. Mm. When we look at the past, a lot of our listeners will be interested in how to go about approaching a reading with a medium. You know, it'll be their first time. It'll be, they may have listened to this and thought, oh, well, maybe I will. So what would you suggest that they do? What mindset should they take as they approach and make the appointment? To keep an open mind is the biggest thing because when people come to a reading with an expectation of exactly how the reading should unfold, they are often disappointed because spirit might have something even better in store than you imagined. But you need to keep the energy open for the medium to uh, allow the energy to come through and if someone keeps interrupting you going but I don't want to talk to that person I want to talk to this person <laughs> it can actually start muddling up the energy so I always say just come with an open mind and of course do your research and find a medium trust your gut feeling and your intuition about who to go to or maybe recommendations is always good. Word of mouth is always good. Or, you know, I often have people say, I, I saw your picture on your website and I just, I had a feeling, you know, I had a feeling. So honour that feeling. So, uh, or even better, just sit down for a moment and ask spirit, could you please guide me to the perfect reader for me? <laughs> Lovely. That is brilliant. In Australia, because I, I, I know a lot of people in Australia, but I've never asked this question. Do you guys have spiritualist churches and uh, circle groups? We do. Church? We have spiritual churches in most capital cities and a few regional areas, but they are few and far between. Like uh, I moved to Brisbane here three years ago. There's only one spiritualist church in the whole city city of two million people and it's way it's a long way from me so I haven't even made it there yet um but they're around but you have to seek them out you know mm -hmm. yes but you know I'm saying this because if you are in Brisbane if you're in the area you could still develop you could join one of Liz's workshops or classes so you could do it zoom online because you hold those don't you yeah, I, I do. Well, particularly since COVID, um, I've been doing all my classes online. Uh, and, yeah, since I've been in Brisbane, I haven't really done anything in person because it's just we're just coming out of it now. Yeah. But I used to do a lot of uh, in-person stuff pre-COVID. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm hoping in the future that, you know, that's going to happen. Yes, hopefully. I think it's all opening up now. Yeah, I, I miss platform work as well. Um, okay, so if you could carve anything into stone from a ver bird's eye view, if you were flying that looking down, what would you carve into stone? Well, lots of things. But for some reason, the very first thing, I, it, it was a lovely way you described that. I felt like I was, you know, looking down. I just saw a beautiful lotus flower. <laughs> oh how lovely the lotus beautiful opening mm. up the chakras which is a, an important part of mediumship isn't it how we open mm. up 
to receive mm. spirit. Absolutely. That's what I teach in my development classes. Mm. And, and also very important is how to, how to close off when you're finished. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. So there is, a, there is a science to it all listeners <laughs> there is a routine to it all um but if you want to know more about liz's work again all the information will be in the show notes but liz it's been fascinating speaking to you and i have to say um what a pleasure and what a relief to speak to someone else who <laughs> who knows what's going on <laughs> it's it's not always easy you know to um find people with the same sort of uh, mindset as such. But we have come to the segment where we put a fork in it, a far out random question. So I've got a little bowl here and with some Ooh. random questions. So I'm just oh, This is exciting. One, and they really are random. <laughs> it's very clever. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. So what was the unspoken scandal in your town when growing up? Oh, the unspoken scandal. I think everybody had one. Oh, uh, the first thing that comes to mind was um, one of the school teachers, I think this was high school, uh, was dating one of the senior girls. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think what's even uh, more uncanny was that... Um, they ended up, I think, getting married. <laughs> wow, that's scandalous. That is scandalous. That's a Jackie Collins novel. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's random. <laughs> that is random. That's random. And I bet you haven't thought about that in in many since no. it happens. <laughs> I haven't. And, you know, it was a different era then. That's super controversial now. But, you know, obviously they, you know, they had a real connection. So, yeah. But it wasn't, um, you know, it was very frowned upon, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, but everybody had some kind of scandal. But, yeah, interesting stuff. So, thank you so much, Liz. This has been amazing. Thank you. And all of your books are available either through Liz's website or through Amazon and probably other outlets as well. Quite a few yeah. online bookstores, right. yeah. All online bookstores, excellent. And don't forget, guys, go and follow, subscribe to the podcast All Aboard the Medium Ship, <laughs> which is <laughs> wonderful. You can't forget that name. You cannot Thank forget you. it. Go and follow Liz as well. Check out her website uh, too, which is LizWinterMedium.com and Facebook, Liz Winter and Instagram, Liz.Winter um, underscore medium underscore coach. And that's the other thing. You can get some coaching as well. So <laughs> thanks again. Have a fantastic rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.